we are here today to make our voices heard in a representative democracy. For too long, uh, our entire state has struggled with water quality, water contamination, air contamination, soil, and not protecting our resources for future generations. And we are here because Democracy is best when we work together. We have a representative democracy. So we are here to raise our voices, to say that we would like to support House Bill 220. And with that, I am going to turn it over to our prime sponsor, who is here with us today. We have Representative Medina Wilson Anton. Please give our state representative and prime sponsor, a hand. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hello, Delaware. We have people here this afternoon from all across our state, from as north as Wilmington to Sussex County in the south. So thank you all for joining us. I'm incredibly excited to be joining you today in support of HB 220, the Green Amendment which will add language to our state's constitution to ensure that all Delawareans have a right to clean air, clean water, and a clean environment. Woo! Yeah. In 2020, I was elected at the age of 26 to represent the 26th district, and now at the age of 28, I'm still the youngest member of the House or the Senate. And as we know, these issues of the environment and climate change are incredibly important to all of us, but especially to members of younger generations. And this bill is important that we're going to make sure we protect our resources and the beauty of our state for future generations, which I think I'm part of, right? And a lot of young yeah. people here today are part of as well. Woo! At the same time, we know Delawareans across our state are not able to drink the water that comes out of their faucet without being sick are not able to go outside without finding their car covered in dust that makes them sick. And some families aren't even able to take showers with the water that comes out of the faucet. That's an issue. And I know I like gardening. There are Delawareans that can't garden. They can't put things in the ground in their backyard or in their front yard without worrying that that might make them sick too. And it's been too long that the situation has been like this. Delawareans deserve clean air, clean water, a clean environment, and we deserve to be able to enjoy the beauty of our state, not just today and next year and 10 years from now, but for generations to come. And so I'm really excited that we're all coming out today to support HB 220. And I'll just share, I'm not sure if this was mentioned already, but constitutional amendments are a long haul, right? We have to get it passed this year, but we have to get it passed again next year. And so that means that we have to keep pushing. We have to use our voices, reach out to legislators, and I would encourage everyone here to reach out to their House member and their Senate member to make sure that they don't only support this bill, but that they sign on as a sponsor and make sure that we protect our environment and resources for generations to come. So thank you all so much for joining us and for rallying for such an important piece of legislation. Representative Wilson Anton for being such a powerful legislative champion. We couldn't be getting anywhere without her voice and her passion and her commitment. So thank you so, so much. So I am really pleased to be here with all of you to talk about the power and importance of constitutional protection for our environmental rights. We've been hearing a lot in the national news lately about how important it is to be very explicit, very clear when we want to protect a fundamental right in our Constitution. That if we are not explicit, if we are not clear, that those rights that we hold dear can simply be cast aside as a political pawn, as a whimsy, anytime anybody feels like it who happens to be in a position of power. Well, we are here today in the state of Delaware to make very, very clear to our government officials that we expect constitutional protection for our rights to clean water and clean air, a stable climate and healthy environment, and an end to environmental sacrifice zones. And why? Because it's our right. It's our right. 
Now, when people are speaking with government officials about the Green Amendment, too often, too often we're hearing, ah, we don't need that. We have laws. We have environmental protections. We don't have a problem here in the state of Delaware, so we don't need to do anything more. Well, if that's true, if constitutional protection for environmental rights isn't actually going to change anything, then why not give it to us? Why not just pass it and make it easy? Well, they're not going to do that because, they, at least the opposition, because they know, like we know, that there actually is a problem when it comes to environmental protection here in the state of Delaware. And that we actually do need higher, better protection for our environment, for our people. We know that Delaware's environmental laws focus too much on legalizing pollution through reviews and permitting rather than preventing the harm. And as a result, people across the state are suffering, suffering from environmental pollution and degradation. They're drinking contaminated water. They're breathing polluted air. Delaware's rivers and streams just a few weeks ago were determined to be the most polluted in the United States of America. We know that Newcastle and Kent counties are located in a region that has been identified to be the 18th most polluted metro area when it comes to particle pollution, most polluted across the United States. Particle pollution has devastating health consequences. This is not okay. We know, we know that there are too many Delawareans that have that man-made family of chemicals toxins known as PFAS in their blood at higher levels than the national average. That PFAS is in waterways here in the state of Delaware. And despite knowing these things, our Delaware government officials have still failed to put in place enforceable drinking water standards to make sure that people are not drinking this dangerous, toxic family of chemicals. And we know that communities of color and low-income communities continue to be sacrificed to environmental pollution and degradation, sometimes illegally, but all too often very, very legally under the laws of the state of Delaware. It's not okay. It's time for a change. We need greater protection. Why? Because it's all right. Now, in Delaware, it's up to the government, not actually to the people, to determine when, if, and how to amend the state constitution. But despite that fact, our government officials must never forget that the state constitution is a document of, by, and for the people. And it is we, the people, making very clear to our government officials what we expect from them when they are governing over us, what we will allow and what we will not allow them to do here in the state. And in that spirit, we the people are here today to say we have an inalienable, inherent, indefeasible right to clean water and clean air, to healthy soils and a stable climate, to flora, fauna, and ecosystems that are not just surviving, but that are thriving. And we want these to be constitutional rights so that when we have a problem, we can turn to the Constitution to protect the environment, to protect the people of the state of Delaware. Yes. Yes. And so we are here to join our voices together, to stand for a constitutional Green Amendment, so that we can secure a constitutional right to a safe, clean, and healthy environment for all Delawareans, and for both present and future generations. And why? Because when it comes to the environment, say it with me, it's all right! When it comes to clean water, what is it? It's all right! When it comes to clean air, it's all right! When it comes to a stable climate, it's all right! When it comes to healthy environments, it's all right! Say it with me, it's all right!
Thank you for having me. My name is Rodney Marlow. I'm a Dover resident, small business owner, and I'm on the advisory board for the Delaware Center for Justice. I'm an active member of MAJC, and I have a nonprofit organization named My Community's Keeper as well. I was personally responsible for bringing drugs and other illegal activity to New Street, which is right around the corner, in the late 80s. I ended up being incarcerated for 22 consecutive years. While I was incarcerated, I decided I would help repair the community that I harmed. We all make mistakes, but we all have the chance to right our wrongs. I'm a perfect example of that. It saddens me to know that children in disadvantaged areas such as Simon Circle, Capitol Green, New Street, and other residents in Dover are drinking brown water and breathing unhealthy air. The Green Amendment will give Delaware the opportunity to right their wrongs and provide its less fortunate residents with clean air and clean water. The Green Amendment will be added to the state constitution if supported, and it will be law. It will then have to be enforced. I encourage all residents of Delaware to reach out to their legislators and ask them to support the Green Amendment. Thank you. A very generous introduction. I say good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Let's first give a big round of applause to the young people who traveled all the way north to come down here and join us here. It is the young people who change this world and we need your help and your support and other colleagues. So I come before you as a medical doctor today to give you some very fundamental reasons why we need to have a Green Amendment, especially in Delaware. So before I start, please join me in taking a deep breath in and then let it out slowly. By this action, you have proven that all of us are connected. We all breathe the same air. No matter where we came from, no matter what our education level is, no matter what our economic standard is, no matter what our politics is, we are all connected. So we are talking about an issue where there shouldn't be any opposition. Who could be against clean air, clean water, and a safe environment for our people? And that's what we, that's what we deserve. So I want to, want to make two observations for you. Want to make two observations for you. The first one is the Maya said that 97% of our rivers and streams are contaminated. Water is impaired. It's not good for bathing. It's not good for swimming. It's not good for fishing. And then the Biden Institute or Biden School of Public Policy and administration at University of Delaware published a brief that says we are not doing that hot on air quality. We are 40, 41st in the nation in terms of the air quality. We are 40 states that are better air quality. People there breathe better quality of air than we do in Delaware. But the water is the most fundamental issue because we are 50th in the 50 states. How did it happen in Delaware? First state become the 50th state. The answer is very simple. It's benign neglect. It's the people, there are so many people doing such a wonderful job, running around, doing everything every day. Look at the water. Army Corps of Engineers is involved in water. Denrec is involved in water. Health Department is involved, involved in water. And when there are so many cooks making these things, things fall through the crack. Everybody is responsible for something. Nobody is accountable for anything. And so that's what brought us over here, benign neglect year after year to where we are today, that we are the 50th state in, in, in the water quality. Why do I say air and water is important? As a medical doctor, I tell you, it does not take an MD to determine that. A seventh grader will tell you, if your water and air is contaminated, you're going to have a lot more people sick over here, right? Because contaminated water makes people sick. And when people are sick, you're going to be spending a lot of money on health care, providing the care to those, those folks. And when you do that, there's not enough money left to support the young people and the senior citizens in our state that need help. And so where are we? As according to the Kaiser Family Foundation, the state of Delaware has the third highest health care cost in the nation. 
third highest cost because there are so many people sick and they need very expensive care to be, to be taken care of. And wouldn't it be wise, common sense, that if your sink is overflowing, that you turn off the tap before you start mopping the floor. So it seems to me that we have to turn off the tap. And this green amendment will turn off the tap and will let us catch up. It will take 30 years for Mother Nature to cap up, catch up to be where, where we are. Your legislators, I've met many of them, they are very good people, very good people. They want to do the right thing, but they will do only the right thing if they hear from you what you want them to do. If they don't hear from you, from you, they'll do whatever somebody else tells them. So it's very important that when you go home, talk to your family, talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, and you folks in schools, talk to other kids, so they could go and talk to their, their, their parents, and they will then communicate, and legislators will do what's right for the state, and we will have a Green Amendment. And my last statement, one last statement is addressed through you to the legislators. I say to them, when the Green Amendment is passed, and it is the constitution of our state, part of Bill of Rights, this will be the single most important prevention app, in, in, intervention in the, to preserve the health and welfare of people of the state of Delaware. So folks, get on board. Democrat, Republican, Independent, this is your chance to make history. Get on board, use common sense to find common ground for the common good. Thank you, God bless you all. Thank you, Dr. Octor. And I just want to recognize for a minute, Dr. Octor talked about the students we have here today, uh, the young people, the folks from the universities, and we have someone that's going to speak next from the Charter School of Wilmington. But I wanted to just acknowledge um, that we have folks here from the University of Delaware, from Delaware State University. Anyone else that I'm missing within school? So we have members present. There's a lot of young folks here. Young people really care about this issue. It's important, and it's not only a health issue. This is an economic issue, right? Because good environmental health is always good economic health. It's important for the economy in our state to have clean water. We all need it. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Ariel Flaherty. She is a junior at the Charter School of Wilmington and is passionate about preserving Delaware's natural resources and ensuring justice for all. Follow me. Justice for all! 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 Thank you so much. So I just want to start off by talking about the many rights we take for granted. Um, for example, the right to free speech as other speaker, speak, speakers have exercised today and I'm about to exercise myself and the right to assemble, as we are all here today arguing for what is notably one of Delaware's must um, needed accomplishments and much needed, um, and much needed piece of legislation. But now think about this. We are all breathing in air and we all drink water today. We depend on water and air to live. So shouldn't we have a right to breathe clean air and to drink clean water as well? Yes. 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 Unfortunately, many Delawareans don't have this right and breathe poisonous air tainted with chemicals and suffer dangerous consequences. Where you live in Delaware can determine your chances of survival. And unfortunately, drinking clean water and breathing clean air is not a guaranteed right. But what makes this fundamental necessities of life any different from our constitutionally guaranteed liberties that we're exercising here today? For these very reasons, we need a Green Amendment in Delaware. I just want to say thanks for the opportunity to speak today. Um, as was mentioned, I'm a junior at the Charter School of Wilmington, and I first learned about the Green Amendment last year at my school when a group of students took to the track on a windy April day, and we marched around and rallied for the creation of the Green Amendment. And I'm really optimistic that we're able to return here today 
but I realize that our work is not done, and the youth of Delaware stand united in support of a Green Amendment to the Delaware State Constitution. The youth have learned, we have witnessed the worsening climate impacts, and now we are here to act. We have listened. I remember learning about, in my freshman year social studies class, about how the role of government is to protect its citizens. And every Delaware student takes a civics class before they graduate and learns this key fact. Similarly, we have learned about other rights guaranteed by the Constitution that I mentioned today, like the right to assemble and the right to free speech. But we have also witnessed the heightening impacts of climate change. I used to go to the Brandywine River, which is right by my house um, when I was younger, and I witnessed after storm the colors of the river would change and the current would be um, traveling at a faster rate. And as I've gotten older, I've noticed that these frequent storms happen so much more and they have disastrous outcomes, not only for um, animals and wildlife, but also for the people of Delaware. For example, after Hurricane Ida came through last year, 200 people plus were displaced from their homes in Wilmington. That's 200 people who were without a home for months because of a disaster, and that is exactly why we need the Green Amendment. Now, climate change holds very real and direct consequences for our state, and we are the lowest lying state, as um, I've learned in school, and I'm sure a lot of you guys know. So we are reminded that climate impacts are a thing of the now, not of the future, and we must act now, therefore. Now, the youth might not be able to vote, but we have a voice and we are willing to demand action from our legislature because we are the generation that will impact and inherit this planet no matter what condition it is in. We cannot afford to act at the expense of our environment because our interests are tied together as one. If you want a world for your children, for your children's children, and for their grandchildren, protect their rights to a clean and healthy environment. The youth are doing our part. We're learning, we're being active in democracy, and now we demand that senators and legislators do theirs and protect the people of Delaware and vote for the Green Amendment. Thank you. As we stand here demanding for our government officials to take immediate action on passing the Green Amendment to allow all Delawareans the right to clean water and air, we must understand that this reform is only a small part of a much, much much larger issue at hand. This piece of legislation will help protect Delaware's water, air, climate, soil, and ecosystems in order to preserve the land for future generations. But time is running out. Every day we hear new stories about the climate catastrophe. Just last month, hundreds of scientists uh, involved with a group called Extension Rebellion held protests all over the world, begging government officials to take concrete changes addressing climate change. And how do our government officials react? As they always do, with heavily militarized police arresting these protesters who are peacefully assembling, asking, demanding for people to understand that time is running out if that time hasn't ran out already. I am here encouraging everyone to please pay attention to what is happening in our city, in our state, in our country, but most importantly, in our world. Because this affects every single one of us, even if you don't care about it. Access to clean water and air is not a radical idea, but a human right. While I encourage everyone here to go out and speak for this amendment, more importantly, I encourage everyone to organize. Organize, organize, organize. Because voting for these reforms can only do so much Look for organizations that speak to you, that you can be involved with. I am a member of PSL, a political organization that fights for working class people and all oppressed people. We understand our, our current economic system does not have the morals or the ethics to solve climate change. If you would like to know more about our, our party, please feel free to speak to me afterwards. This is our planet, and we have to fight with everything we have to protect it. Thank you.